Hi, I'm Megan Nielsen and today I'm going to repair a pair of saltwater sandals. Or at least, I'm really going to try. I'm nervous, I'm excited, I can't wait to start it. Shoemaking is a bit of a hobby of mine that I'm trying to get better at. I'm still a beginner, but I already have a lot of the supplies I need for this project. So I'm going to jump in and get started. I'm going to show you all of the steps that I do. Hopefully I'll learn a few things along the way and I hope you enjoy watching me muddle my way through repairing a pair of sandals. I think I'm going to start with this lacing tool and see if that will help me. So here are the sandals after I have removed all of the stitching. As you can see in quite a few places the glue has failed and is coming away from the insoles so I think my idea of gluing it back down then stitching it is a good one so I'm going to give this one a little bit of a wipe down now and then I will get started on it. Okay, so it's time for the super sticky gross glue. I'm out doing this outside. I also like to put down a paper bag or something like that just to protect my work surface. Even though this is a workbench, I use it for sewing as well. So I like to keep it pretty clean. I've got a couple of pegs here. I think I'm just going to kind of peg the straps like that just to kind of keep the insole away from the outsole while the glue goes off. This glue has an open time of five to 30 minutes. You paint it on you leave it to actually kind of get it feels almost dry a tiny bit tacky and once that happens then you close it up and you bang it with a hammer so I'm going to do that now I have a love-hate relationship with this glue really important to get the glue on both sides so you don't just want to put it on one side it has to go on the insole and the outsole Okay, I'm going to leave that to go off. Okay, so now that the glue is dry, it's not really, it's the tiniest bit tacky, I'm going to attach this strap back and try and line it up with where it was before, which I think was there. Do the same on the other side. And now the last step is kind of the fun part. You have to push all the bits down and then whack with a hammer. Okay. That's really loud. I wonder if I should do it on the grass. Everything's been glued and hammered and now the scary part I need to start stitching but before that I'm just going to clean up the sole 
here and see if I can just use this beveling tool to gouge a new channel out. I'm not sure if it's going to work. This is made for edges, but if it doesn't work, I'm going to grab my exacto knife out. Oh, that looks pretty bad. That does not look good. Okay, one side. Oh my gosh, you know what I should be using? One of those like lino cutting tools. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't think of this before. This is awesome. Okay. Also, yes, I am a craft hoarder who has like every craft supply in my cupboard somewhere. It's been a really long time since I used this. Let's see what we got. These things, I must admit, do kind of terrify me. Which one of you looks? You look like you want to be the one. Oh, this is going to be so much better. This is a speedball liner cutter. I think it's called a liner cutter. Um, I bought it a couple of years ago when I was into uh, liner cutting. And I had great grand plans of doing heaps of block printing. It turns out I have no follow through. But I still have the tools. And that is coming in handy today. Okay. This little, um, I don't know what this is called, but... It's for holding the lino block while you're carving it, and that is actually being really helpful right now. I'm low-key terrified that I'm about to chop a finger off, or at least gouge into it really badly. Spoke too soon, because I totally gouged my finger doing this one, so... Okay, I think that's enough. I think I'm gonna get, I need two needles, so I think I'm gonna get two of these ones. One of the things that is really cool about when you are using this wax thread is that you can secure it. What you do is pull through a large amount and then when you come back here you need to kind of poke the needle through the thread and then you can pull it through and they are now joined together. So I'm going to put one needle on the one end and I'm going to put the other needle on the other end and that way I can sew from both directions. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Okay, so I have this piece of scrap wood just so I don't damage my table. I think I'm going to start at the inseam because I think that's where they started last time. And here goes nothing. Hope I'm doing this right. Hey, all right, this is working. Okay, that's great. I think I'm going to use the wooden block to help me push through the whole time. Oh, I'm getting really concerned I'm going to run out of thread. We'll see. So the ones that were going through the toe, I found it really easy just to pull it through by hand, but the ones going through the heel, I found that having a pair of pliers really helped to pull it through. I'm doing this little tug at the end of both stitches to tighten up the tension. So the reason I'm going side to side is so that I can make sure that it's nice and tight between each stitch. If I just stitched in one direction all the way around and then one direction the other way around, all the stitches would be loose and I would have no opportunity to tighten them effectively. So making sure that you have two needles and you're going, um, doing each stitch individually from the back and the front, make sure that you can keep your tension really good. This thread snapping has got me so concerned about whether I'm going to make it to the end. I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches to go. This is very stressful. <laughs> I actually can't believe that I made it. So I've this tiny amount of thread left. So I've got to tie a knot now. I'm just going to cut this one off. Um, I've got a tie and knot here and then I've got my matches. It's better if you've got a lighter, but we don't have a lighter. We have matches. So 
I'm going to make a knot now. The reason the needle is still attached is because I ran out of thread and if I take the needle off I'm not going to have enough thread to pull the knot tight with so that's why it's still dangling there. Okay, there's my knot. I don't know if you can see but I'm just going to cut it so there's just a little bit of the waxed thread the left there and I like to kind of squeeze them together at this point and now I'm actually going to burn them so if you have a lighter you can light them and then use the back of the lighter to smush it flat I don't have a lighter so what I tend to do is use the lid of my needle box um, or you could use the hammer I'm actually you know what? I'll use the hammer try not to burn the actual leather itself so here goes nothing if you can see that that is one complete shoe I am actually super happy with that it's not perfect it still has wear but this is a kid's shoe that she wears to play in all the time I am super happy with how that turned out the strap is fixed it's wearable she'll be able to wear this for a couple of more months until she grows out of it at which point we'll get her in new pair of sandals but I'm really happy with that I'm gonna to go to the second one now I really hope you enjoyed coming along for the journey of trying to figure out if I could fix my daughter's saltwater sandals I feel like it was a big success I really enjoyed the process it was a lot easier than I thought it would be I feel like I learned some more skills and some more tricks for the next time I want to do this my family are huge saltwater sandal fans so I can see many more saltwater sandal <laughs> repairs in my future and I also personally have a pair where these straps have started degrading and I actually want to replace them with new leather um, so I think that will be really fun so this project was also kind of a good testing ground for seeing what it was like to actually um, repair these and hand sew the insole to the sole it's the first time I've ever done that so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time